It's the National Football League on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Cleveland Browns and the Houston Texans. And it's coming up next. EA Sports coverage of the National Football League is on the air. Today, we've got a fun little clash in the AFC as it'll be the Cleveland Browns taking on the Houston Texans. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles kickoff moments away. Quickly, what are you watching in this one? The offensive line for both teams, because both teams have a terrific pass rush. They've got to keep their passers upright. If they have a chance to do that, they can both thrive on offense and move the ball downfield. Stadium in Houston. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And in hindsight, probably should have taken a knee as he only gets this out to the 16-yard line. So out come the Texans for their opening drive. Leading them out, a two-year starter at Ohio State and second overall pick in the draft, C.J. Stroud. I tell you what, when he's on schedule for that week, secondaries take notice because you've got to stay alert back there on every snap. A truly powerful arm, one that's capable of challenging any level of the defense on any given play. That's why so many scouts preach arm talent when preparing for the NFL draft. A quarterback with arm strength to make every throw in the book, he's an asset to have in any offense. Singletary to get the drive started. The game's first play produces six yards. Brings up second down. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. From the 21, here's a second and four. Singletary again. That nifty juke there. And this will be a Texas first down as he gets us up past the 30 to the 32. He's one relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Play action. Here's Stroud. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. That certainly appeared to be a play call where they were just trying to make second down, second and short. I think they thought the coverage was off a little bit more than it was. Nice job there pressing up on it and forcing the incompletion. Here's second and 10. Stroud to throw it. Open man is Noah Brown. Still going inside the 20. And did he get in? No, down at the one-yard line. A big play there on the catch and run. 66 yards. And what a letdown after a huge play. He's going to pull this in and then set sail for the end zone. And he nearly made it, too. But he's going to be tracked down just short of the goal line. So a big play there that's going to set him up with first and goal at the one-yard line. A terrific opening drive has them knocking on the door first and goal. Singletary. No signal, and now they say he did not get in. He is stonewalled at the one. Call it no gain, and it's going to be second and goal. They're right there at the one. No gain, but don't let that stop you. Line back up and keep going at them. If I'm them, I'm thinking about going at it four straight times. Play action. Stroud now. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. 
They certainly thought they had him surrounded and probably thought they were going to get him on the ground and get the sack, but he's able to elude that. And even though it threw it incomplete downfield, if you're a defensive back, you're loving the pressure that you're seeing from your front. How about this Browns defense they've held so far? This is now third and goal. And they'll turn to the power game to try to get in. And he gets into the end zone. Touchdown, Houston. Andrew Beck taking it in from a yard out. And the Texans are on the board first here this afternoon. That's just a solid, methodical drive to start this game. And how about how it culminated? Doing exactly what they wanted to do, getting the ball downfield, and then running it into the end zone. I'm just telling you, partner, when you run it in rather than throw it in, that hurts the defense psychologically a heck of a lot more. Extra point by Fairbairn, up and good. And it's now a 7-0 game. Touchdown, here's Fairbear now to kick it away. And his guys will get the football right at the 20-yard line. And here are the Browns for their opening drive. And a quarterback, a longtime single caller in the National Football League, former Super Bowl MVP Joe Flacco. Remember when the conversation was, is Joe Flacco elite? Well, at one point, he was a lead enough to not only win a Super Bowl, but be named the MVP of that game. And for a time, one of the top-paid quarterbacks in the league. Not bad for a young man who transferred to Delaware from Pitt while in college. This guy has had a great career, not many chances now to lead an offense, but still capable if put on the field. Flacco off play action. There's a short throw taken in by Bryant. And he'll have this past the 30 prior to going out of bounds. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. We'll see what kind of mindset they have here offensively after giving up the touchdown on the opening drive. And based on our time with them, you know, prior to this game, I feel like they've got a good mindset going in. In fact, the discussion that we had with the coaching staff was, you know, we may give up some points in this game, so offense has to be ready each and every time to either equal or try and get us ahead and try and keep us ahead. This is their chance to respond to that first touchdown given up. Charles, already trailing by touchdown early. This offense, how imperative is it for them to get points out of this drive? Well, they feel like they have to go ahead and match because of what was already on the board against their defense. But I think even more so, you just want to avoid three and outs. You want to be able to stay on the field for a little while, let your defense catch their breath a little bit, even if you don't score any points. Got an open man. That's David Njoku, the tight end. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. I think when they look at their offense, they think to themselves, weapons, weapons everywhere. And they want to move the ball around. They want to spread it to different people. But you absolutely know they want to get this man involved as well. And that's what they just did on that play. Once more, it's Flacco. Right back to Njoku. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. Hang on now, we're going to pause here. We've got an injured player. Well, now they're going to come out and take a look at this injury, and we'll be back in a moment. So a first and 10 now in Houston territory at the 43. Setting up to throw Flacco. And he's got his receiver, Cooper. And all the way in, touchdown, Cleveland. Amari Cooper, 43 yards. And the Browns respond to that opening drive touchdown with one of their own. But Charles, here in their opening series, they said they had certain plays scripted for certain players. 
That looked like a well-designed play to get one of their top targets involved. Yeah, let's face it, Brandon. A player of his talent That's is a problem for any right opponent right. to defend, and we saw it right there. They tried to deny an open lane to him. He still outplayed the coverage and scored the early touchdown. Good luck trying to figure out how to defend him as this game moves on. Each team's had it. Each team has scored. 7-7 here as the kick's away. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. So now we get set to see Houston for their second drive of the ball game. A long drive last time out for this offense, Charles. If you remember, they started basically in the shadows of their own end zone, marched it down the field, and a lot of that was through the passing game. And partner, as a former defensive back, I'm having almost a physical reaction watching what's happening right now, but let's give credit where it's due because they've done an excellent job moving the ball through the air. Secondary getting picked apart pass by pass. They need to make some adjustments there on the back end. Yeah, because offensively, we know that they're not going to be shy about throwing that football. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. And not a lot of success to be found there. Oh, you got that right, partner, because if you're trying to make guys miss about 10 yards or so downfield, that's a pretty good play. But if you've got to do it in your own backfield, I consider that a problem. That doesn't work too well. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. I can assure you, setting up a screen is much more difficult than it appears. It requires excellent timing from everyone on the offense, and a defense's number one goal is to throw that timing off. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Stroud. Right side complete. That's Woods. And he'll be brought down at the 28, and that is well short of the first. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. And they rallied and made the tackle. On is the punter, Johnston now, as he sends this one away. And no return on this one as the fair catch is signaled for and taken. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Browns will take over, first and ten. drive with four and they get him down but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line they may want to go back to that one first play of the drive good for 15 and a first down the cd a lot of times like to separate speed and quickness and they've got a back that's both we know that he's fast in the open field but man his first step is so quick too it is something isn't it because you think of that type of speed getting to the perimeter and turning up field but also when you run those inside runs and now off to the races down the a big play there on the catch and run 57 yards a oh, big time credit what a play design there they wanted to get him loose in the open field and they succeeded he had all sorts of room to operate in and they finally track him down inside the five yard line After the big play, a chance to finish now on first and goal. Hunt is not going anywhere. He'll be hit and dropped for no gain at the two-yard line. Nothing at all on that one. It'll be second down. So stuff from the two, now what? You know me pretty well. What do you think I want here? Play action. Definitely let him get outside and create. And if he has to run it, he has a little bit more space. 
Flacco here on second down. Looking end zone, but it's incomplete. That's an excellent play by the defender. He diagnosed that one. Close quickly. It helped force the incompletion. Third down and goal now. And this Houston defense not backing down. They'll look for one more stop. Here's Flacco. To the left side and complete for Amari Cooper. So they hit pay dirt, but don't count it yet. There's laundry on the field. We'll see what the penalty flag is about. Illegal touching. Offense. So reverse the celebration. We'll see if they have something else in their bag of tricks. And isn't that always tough to watch when they score and you see the excitement and then when they realize those points aren't going to count? Can they get it back together and find their way back to the end zone? Here's Dustin Hopkins now to try the field goal. This is less than an extra point, just a 19-yard attempt. Hopkins' kick is good. So three points on the board, as easy a field goal as you're going to get, but I can see you shaking your head. I love that peripheral vision of yours, partner, because to me, if it's the fourth quarter and you're up six, I get it. But now, even if you run and don't get in, you're still setting them up to go a long field, 98, 99-yard drive. How do you look at your defense and not give them that opportunity? Following the made field goal for three, Hopkins now to kick it off. This taken in right around the goal line. Now comes a Houston offense as they get set to take over here. And Charles, a very uninspired effort the last time we saw them out there. It was a quick three and out, then they punted the football. Yeah, and you never want to get stopped so soundly during a series, but what would be even worse now is letting it happen again right here. They've got to get going. On first down, here's Stroud. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Brown. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. The drive starting with a first down, 11 yards on that pickup. But whatever you call it, run the hitch route, a lot of times that ball's got to be in the air before the receiver even turns around. That's the result of throwing it so many times in practice. It's really a timing route. Make sure that ball's out of your hands, and oftentimes receiver turns around, and there's the ball. Nice completion there. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. And he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, it was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just zoom, quick, quick, quick. And what a terrific play, holding them to no gain. Stroud now on second down. He'll get this into the hands of Nico Collins. It'll be a gain of five, and that'll make it third down. It's a gain of five. Brings up third and five. They'll need five on this play to move the sticks. Now Stroud. And the Browns pressure gets to him that time, and he's going to go down. Anthony Walker with a big-time sack on third down. It's a loss of seven. Even keeping the back in for extra protection on third down, they still couldn't prevent the sack. Now it's fourth and long thanks to a terrific individual effort on defense. 46 on his first kick. This one in that neighborhood as well. And a fair catch signaled for and taken at about the 18-yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt. And it will be first and 10 as they take over.
They'll start on the ground here on first down. He is taken down at the 21 after a short gain of two. Oh, that's a real nice job there by the defensive front. They just engaged and held their ground. But how about the guy who made the play? We often talk about whether they take a good first step or not. Many times you just don't take any step. Just get your feet moving, get your body going. And then once he made the read, he was able to make the play. Again, they turn to Ford. And he stopped immediately there. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for him. Well, if you look where that play starts, O-line versus D-line, that was a battle won by the D-line. Yeah, and oftentimes it's won by quickness off the ball. Who can handle the guy across from them best? On that play, the defensive line did exactly that. Here's third and nine. To pass, Flacco. And he had a reach for that one, but can't grab it. It's behind him, and it's incomplete. Well, they came up with points in their first two possessions, but it looks like they'll come up empty here on their third drive. The defense finally starting to get locked into them a little bit. Might have to go a little bit deeper into their playbook on their next possession. On fourth down, Corey Bajorquez gets set to punt for Cleveland. Desmond King deep for Houston. We'll call that a 43-yard punt, two on the return, and the Texans will take over. And now out comes Houston. Over on the sideline, hoping to hit that reset button between possessions. Last time out, they had to punt it away. This time, hoping to finish this thing off in the end zone. So good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 at their 36-yard line. Now they'll go play action here with Stroud. They'll get this to Devin Singletary out of the backfield. Call it a gain of a yard, and that'll make it second down. All defense is worried that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam coming out of the backfield, it could turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal gain. The second down throw now from Stroud. Got him in. It's Brown. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. A busy first quarter. His third catch of the afternoon is a first down. How about the first quarter he's putting together out wide? Pretty impressive. I think that he likes his fact that we're playing this as a day game. You know, some guys, they respond better in the evenings for some reason it builds up. For this guy, day game, and he is off and running. You're exactly right. 100 might be conservative with the start that he's had here in the first he, quarter. Yeah, by the numbers, he's on pace for 200-plus right now. They'll run on first down with Singletary. And he'll get this into enemy territory, but not by much, as he's down to the 48. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. 10-7 our score after one, right here on EA Sports. Ready for the second quarter from Houston. It's the Texans in possession of the football. Now second and nine. As they've got it as we resume action. On second down, it's Stroud. And that's going to be incomplete. Zone coverage there, and they were playing deep. That makes it obviously a little bit harder to run by guys. And that time, there's not much of a window to get the ball in there, and it winds up incomplete. The offense on third down, just one for three thus far. This is third and nine. A shotgun snap to Stroud. And he's taken down. This will be a Brown sack. Dalvin Tomlinson able to get him down for a loss of 11. And it brings up fourth down. Now that was a passer's nightmare. The front door totally shut down by the defense. So he kept going backwards, hoping to find another avenue of escape. It didn't exist. On fourth down, out is the punter, Cameron Johnston, to boot it away. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Calls for the fair catch, makes the fair catch just inside the 15-yard line. A 40-yard punt, no return, and the Browns will take over with a first and 10 deep in their own territory.
They'll start this drive out on the ground. He'll work his way up the middle for a gain of about four, second down. Brandon, we just saw the benefits of being able to run the ball successfully. They pick up four yards on that carry. So now if you're a play caller, you can do just about anything you want, but on the defensive side of the ball, you scramble a little bit. Now you're behind trying to figure out, do I need to blitz him? Do I need to pressure him? How do I gain an advantage on this snap? There's a ball thrown right side and complete. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. That's the first catch of the game for Goodwin. It's a first down. Well, they obviously read man coverage their partner, and he got downfield, broke down the defender, made him what, what think. What do you mean by that? Bro, yeah, bro. he made him think he was going to run a different route, probably thought he was going to take it upfield, and then he curls back inside for the completion. On first down, Flacco. Quick throw, and he's got Amari Cooper. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. They get 10 more there, and I believe that'll be enough for another first down at will. Now Flacco. Can't get away, and he's taken down. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. That's a ball he needs to let go of there. Wasn't the most time in the world to work through his progression, but NFL quarterbacks, they've got to sense the pressure. They've got that internal clock, and the ball has to be gone. And if you're not going to escape and run for it, you have to let it go before the pressure gets to you and puts you on the ground. Got to imagine the pass rush will be equally intense here on second down following the sack. It's second and 18. Flacco's throw taken in by Cooper here. And he'll be out of bounds just shy of the 40. 23 yards the pick up there. It's a game of matchups, and that's why you take your receivers and move them around a bunch, especially your best guys. And when they work out of the slot, you often hear the coaches talk about how great it is because it gives you a two-way go. You can break out or you can break in. That makes it hard to defend. Pass the 20. And all the way inside the 15 before they drop him. That's good for 28 yards. Good strong throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. Here's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. The handoff to Ford up the middle, and he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. The running lanes have definitely not been there for him here in the first half, and I don't think it's all been his fault. His offensive line hasn't given him much space. A loss results there. Maybe just a slight detour on what's been a strong drive. here, second and 11. They run with four. And again, the run defense stout this time. He maybe gets back to the line of scrimmage, but no more. No gain that time, but it leaves him with third and 11 coming up. Ninth play of the drive coming up, and certainly not an easy one on third and long. Flacco. And he's got it. Got his man on the in route. Complete. Yeah, the Browns are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. That's a letdown defensively because they had them stacked up third and long, and you know their thought process had to be just make the tackle in front of the sticks and force the three. Instead, they allowed him room to run, and now they're facing first and goal looking to regroup. Ford, not going anywhere. He'll lose a couple back to the six. A loss of two there, second down. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave him seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they could let a tackler through, but that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted. They'll run with Hunt on second down. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Browns touchdown. Kareem Hunt, a six-yard touchdown run as his guys are able to extend their lead. 
So, partner, it was a passing game that drove them down the field, but when they get close, they trust that man in the backfield, and he took them home. And they trust their offensive line as well because so many of these units, they specialize in either pass protection or run blocking. This group shows his versatility and gets both done on this drive. Hopkins with the extra point, and his guys will take a 10-point lead. Following the touchdown, Dustin Hopkins will kick it away. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Houston set to take over. They trail by 10, 17-7 as they come up on a first and 10. They'll start this drive out on the ground. Powers through. That play going for 16 yards to start the drive. First down. Now that was an excellent run. And when you see that happen, that's when you're seeing guys doing their job and then some people doing a little bit more. Offensive linemen and tight ends, they're expected to block. But the wide receivers, all they want to do is catch passes. So when they block on a big-time running play and create extra space, you've got to hit the jackpot there. On first down, they stick with Singletary. And there is nowhere for him to cut back as he's taken down in the backfield. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. I know the speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. So after the loss of a yard, they'll look to push forward here on second down and 11. Stroud looking to throw. That's complete. It's Collins. And down he goes at the 45 after a pickup of nine. The Texans on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. Here it's third and two. They'll try to run for this with Singletary. And yeah, he'll be tackled about two yards shy of the line to gain. A one-yard pickup leads to fourth down. Another down on the scoreboard, but the urge to go for it is almost irresistible here on fourth and short. Yeah, I know. I know they're on their own side of the field. Uh, I was going to say. Normally, I would say punt the ball away, but I'm feeling it. I say go for it. Now on fourth down, it's Cameron Johnston on to punt it away. And the fair catch is taken at about the 13-yard line here. 37 yards on the punt with no return. And the offense will come back out deep in their own territory. They look to throw on first and 10 with Flacco. And the throw left sideline here is caught, but they'll rule it incomplete. Couldn't keep his feet in. Second down. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. Second and 10. On the ground, it's Ford. And a nice gain there as he'll be taken down just shy of the 20. Holding offense. All right, so they got that one, Charles, against the center. And let's remember how difficult it is for the center because, remember, he's got to snap the ball to put the play in motion. And sometimes you get that big guy on your nose. You got sometimes where he's coming at you at an angle. 
it's a difficult job for him to snap the ball and then execute his block. And he's up past the 10 to about the 12. It'll be a gain of about five, but they're left with a third and still about 12 to go. He had to fight for every yard on that run. Shook himself free of the tackle and kept fighting, even with the rest of the defense closing in on him. That's the kind of effort you'll take every single time. Third down, Flacco needs a decent chunk of yardage. Multiple defenders getting home there for a loss of 11. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. send out their punter now as the drive goes backwards so he's on to punt it away and he's able to get it out quickly and this is not a bad kick here and that's a 48 yard punt with a coverage holding him to three on the return and the Texans will take over with a first and ten out comes a Houston offense as they get set to take over here See if they can put this drive in the end zone, Charles, because it, it's been a little bit of a rough go at times. They've had to punt the football a ton in this ball game because of stalled out drives. So are you saying that you're kind of tired of seeing the punter run out there and do his thing during this game? Is that what you're trying to say? You, well, I mean, I'm okay with it. I have a feeling that this offense, they don't want to see the punter again. And frankly, the punter doesn't want to run out there anymore himself. He would love to see his offense put together a drive and give his leg a rest. Give him a gain of five on the completion, and that'll bring up second down. It's hurry up mode time for the Texans hustling up to the line. Stroud to throw it. And that one's gonna come up a little short. It's incomplete. To this point, I've been impressed with the work defensively. They have not allowed a lot of receivers to run free. And there's another example, another incompletion. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. They'll run a draw now with Singletary. And a pretty nice tackle there, ranging up from his free safety spot as he'll stop him about a yard short. It's a pickup of four, but they're still a yard short here with fourth down, fourth coming. So many things going to making a good play on defense. In this situation, just not being blown out of the way was a big start and then a nice tackle to finish things off. Cameron Set to Johnson punt, here's Cameron Johnston. Johnston. And this will be out of bounds. Now it's a question of where they'll mark it. And they'll say it crosses at the 11-yard line. And the Browns now going to take over late in this first half. And with a 17-7 lead, maybe they're just looking to get into the locker room. First and 10 here for Flacco. That pass complete to Moore. Now the Browns will use the first of their three timeouts as they stop it here with just under 40 ticks to go in this first half. Here's a second and five. Here's Flacco. This short pass into the hands of Njoku. So five yards here, five on the play. And that'll bring up what looks to be a third in inches. Can't be more than a half a foot. Completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much right after the catch. This time they stay on the ground. And he's going to have a Browns first down as he's able to take this up to the 30-yard line. So we reach halftime here in a 10-point game. As we'll get you over to Orlando, where standing by is Jonathan Coachman. He has our EA Sports halftime report.
All right, BG, thanks very much. And welcome one and all to our beautiful new downtown Orlando studios for this EA Sports halftime report. This has certainly been a fun one to watch so far. We knew this was going to be a battle, but we have not been disappointed. This is the kind of game that could wind up hinging on which side can play mistake-free football the rest of the way. Okay, Coach, thanks as always to you and the gang in Orlando as we welcome everyone back in for quarter number three. Ten-point game, 17-7 the score as we get back to it on EA Sports. No run back here to begin the half, and we will start at the 25-yard line. Here's the Browns offense now getting set to start off this third quarter. And they've got the lead. CD, what do you think the message was at halftime? I don't think the message was too drastic, I think, at the half, or that they need to change things too much. I do think the offensive line could play a little bit better. I think they'll try and help them out more. They'll probably keep a tight end in a few more times and maybe add a running back to the formation to pick up those pass rushers because they probably allowed a few too many sacks for comfort in the first half. They'll start on the ground here on first down. And this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. Brandon, five yards on that run. Let's get back to the huddle and make sure if you're back, you spend time with your offensive line and give them credit. Hard to move those 300-plus pounders at the line of scrimmage, and they did for a significant chunk of yardage. Ball on the 30. They'll come up with a second and five. Flacco. Now a diving effort right sideline. He's got it. It's a gain of 34. Another big play right there. And this is where, as an offense, you can really put the hammer down. You've got a double-digit lead, but those other guys, they've been hanging around. A touchdown here could put this game out of reach. And that's a strong step towards getting it done. So how about that for a chain mover? They're all the way down inside the 40 now for first and 10. This is Ford. A good gain of nine before he's brought down at the 28. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still, got to like the way they're moving the football, partner. Absolutely. Pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you'll take runs like that each and every time, won't you? Ball on the 28-yard line. Here's second and a yard. throw here is incomplete. But plain and simple, that's the second time today that he's dropped a pass. And that one, I think maybe even a little easier than the earlier one that he dropped. Surprising. Was this game announced as a night game prior to and maybe his rhythm confused. is just off? He's got know. thrown off. He's got to wake up, enjoy the sunshine, and go play. On third down, four. Well, they hit him in the backfield and he will not escape. And that is not going to get it done. They end up getting stumped twice after that nine-yard gain back on first down. Just a simple run play there on third and one, but this D was up to the challenge and stopped them, bringing up fourth down. Here's Dustin Hopkins now to try the field goal. Made his first. This now for 46 yards away. Hopkins' kick is good, and that will open the lead up now to 20-7. to seven. Well, they picked up right where they left off in the first half. First drive after the break, they come away with three and increase that lead. Yeah, and you just want to keep building on that lead, don't you? Whether it's six points or three points, take everything you can get, keep maneuvering, keep adding to it, keep making it difficult for them to come back. What's 
Well, following the made field goal for three, Hopkins now to kick it off. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And he had no room to run as he's tackled down inside the 20. Here's the Texans offense now, readying for their first possession of the second half. And their deficit a little wider now than it was at halftime following the field goal a moment ago. But the goal is still the same because you know they want to come out, establish a rhythm in the second half, and get going. Make no mistake about it, though. Kicking field goals, not in their game plan. They need to get the ball in the end zone. On first down, they'll start out with Singletary. And he works it across the 25 before being tackled. 48 yards rushing for him now on what was his 10th carry of the ball game. I'm okay with the call there. In fact, I actually like it. I know they're down a couple of scores, but the running game worked in that situation. I would continue to go in that direction. They go right back to Singletary. And he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle, that's what we saw right there. Yeah, that's what their job is. And really, a lot of the time, they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends, they're like in a sprinter stance. They're just headed straight for the quarterback. That was good recognition on that play to hold them to no gain. And the Browns pressure gets to him that time, and he's going to go down. In for the sack, Miles Garrett. So one quick, easy analysis about why they've struggled so far. They keep putting themselves in third and long situations. They just took another sack right there. And the offensive film session tomorrow may be a little longer than it normally is. <laughs> Not a lot of positive grades will be handed out thus far. Let's go, boys. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. And Stroud now to throw. He'll let this go deep for Collins. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. Two things you can do in that situation. Run and punt the football or try and take your shot at getting the first down. They chose the latter, but they'll have to punt all the same. Here's Cameron Johnston now, standing just outside his own goal line. And a fair catch taken back near about the 35, 36-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Browns will take over, first and 10. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? <laughs> <laughs> not one that I've ever met. And they've got it well across midfield, down to the 40 before it's all said and done. 25 yards, the pick up there, and also a first down. Well, partner, I have to say they caught him in the right defense there. Nickel set, fifth defensive back on the field, and they love to run against that because now you typically get a bigger blocker on a smaller defender. Yeah, because those DBs like you, they want the interception. They're not as worried about the running play, right? <laughs> not at all. And I, I, used to, I, I still remember being in school, and one of my offensive line teammates used to say, boy, I'd love to come down if you hit you little people. <laughs> Good run there. Here's a second and three now from the 33. They'll keep it on the ground. It's Ford, and he struggles to get a yard here, maybe a yard, down to the 31. And this is why aggressive defense coordinators love to blitz. It wreaks havoc because they end up taking their attention to the blitzers, freed up the D lineman to make the play. Third and two. Up the middle they go, Ford. And he's able to pick up the first before he's taken down at the 27. They're able to convert with a gain of four. Well, someone's been having a good game so far. You know something? A lot of it's been power running. They decided to turn him loose again on third down, didn't they? They did indeed. He delivered the tough yards.
They'll run on first down. It's Ford, and just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and ten coming up. They've called his number a lot this afternoon. You wonder how much tread is left on those tires. We certainly do, but I always think back to one of my favorite coaches in the NFL. And he used to have a meeting with his running backs every year in the offseason and say, look, as many times as you're going to carry the ball, you should be able to carry it one more time. So make sure you get in shape. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. 93 yards for him on the ground now as he has been terrific here this afternoon. I think we're seeing the effect that runs like that are starting to have on this game. They're a little bit slower, that front seven reacting to the football, almost like body blows in boxing, slowing them down, and they're really starting to take over in this game. A red zone first down for Flacco. That's complete to the tight end, Aikens. That will go as a pickup of seven on the seventh play of the drive. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches as we just saw him do there because he really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that inline point of attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days. But you can flex him out. You can run wide receiver routes with him. You can make him a primary target. And that's how he'll shred a defense. So the completion gets him just a yard. And that'll leave him with a third and two. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. And he'll hit the slam route. That's caught by Cooper. They're able to convert on third down and that sets up a first and goal. It'll be first and goal when we come back. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Houston. A good chance now to put this game on ice. This is first and goal. Flacco fakes the give, sets to throw to the end zone, but it's incomplete. Down this close to the goal line, first down. Surprised that wasn't a run? I am, and you know I'm old school. I want to run the ball on first down in this situation because second down, that gives me an option of running play action and maybe throwing it. Second and goal, and they will try again from the two-yard line. They'll try to run for it with Ford. And he takes this one in for a Brown score. Jerome Ford taking it in from two yards out. And the Browns have pretty well put it away here in the fourth quarter. Well, he'd been the workhorse on this drive, and it would have been unfair to bring someone else in to finish the job. So they go back to him again, and he delivers with a touchdown run. Now the Browns' offense will stay on the field as they'll go for two here. They're going to try and run. And he got it on the touchdown run, but he won't get in here. He'll be stopped short, and they'll come up empty on the try for two. You know, we've discussed this before, and we've seen it at practices, extra periods being put in for the offense on these two-point tries. But the defense, they're beefing up their support as well in practice. They absolutely have to. If people are going to go for two and try and gain those advantages and make it tougher on your team as the game goes along, you have to be in a position to stop those. You can't let them get the advantage. So, yes, the defensive teams, they're putting in that extra time on two-point plays as well. Following the touchdown, Dustin Hopkins will kick it away. And good coverage there on special teams as they'll get him down shy of the 20. And now out comes Houston. And right now these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting because three straight drives have ended with him punting the football away. Yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive.
On first down, here's Stroud. As this complete to Woods. And he's going to get seven out of this before being taken down at the 27. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give him that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. Stroud looking for Woods again, and he finds him. Well, that'll get them the first down as they get nine yards out of that quick slant. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. So from the 36 now, first and 10. And they'll go play action here with Stroud. And that one incomplete, but now a penalty flag coming in late. That might be P.I. So they take a decent shot, C.D., and the flag comes out for pass interference. Yeah, a little DPI, as they like to call it in the business, right? And the farther you get downfield, the more frenetic things get, and the more calm and control you have to remain as a defender. That was a little bit of a slip there, and the penalty will go against him. They're unable to connect, but a late flag comes in. And the contact may have come too early. So flag for the contact, pass interference. And I know that you're going to look at me and roll your eyes, and rightfully so, because you know what I'm going to say. Doesn't the defender have a right to the football as well? No, I just, I don't like defenders. <laughs> That's because you spent too much time with me. Okay, I'll side with you on this one. This is the correct call. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. They lead big, and a major part of that has been how they've taken their play to a whole new level this second half. No points allowed since the break, and you can add another incompletion to the total number that they forced in this runaway contest. On second down, here's a run with Singletary. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. 61 yards rushing on 12 carries for him now. And they really needed to get something going, didn't they? They had punted on the last two possessions. The running game starting to come to the front for them, providing a nice pickup there to keep this drive going. Now a first and 10 at the 11. Singletary again. And he'll find his way down inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. I think if we put together a job description for a middle linebacker, we would start with being able to hold down things in the middle of the line of scrimmage and be able to take on blockers. But how about the guys who can go sideline to sideline and make plays? Love a guy that can do that. We saw a perfect example of it right there. Singletary, they'll go up the middle. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Officially no gain on the play, and they're left with a third and eight. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. The Texans on third down. It's been a problem, just one for seven thus far. This is third and eight. Now Stroud. Looking end zone, but it's incomplete. It certainly looked like someone was very confident in his ability to fit that one in. I would say he was overconfident because there wasn't a whole lot of separation there. Had that one come pretty well downfield and knocked it away. And a field goal obviously means nothing here. They're going to go ahead and go for it on fourth down. Fourth down, fourth quarter. Here's Stroud. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. The Texans tried it, but they come up empty here on fourth. And this Browns defense stands tall. A look at the running back, the man out of the backfield as he gears up to go again. He is knocking on the door for 100 yards in this ball game. And it's so important. It doesn't seem like it's that big of a deal, just short of it, a little bit over. A little bit over feels better to everyone. Offensive line, running back, team totals. Just something magical about breaking that barrier. Now he's right there on the doorstep now. Oh, 
They will start this drive with Ford. And he's going to be taken down shy of the 10 right around the 9-yard line. Only a yard on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Absolutely love the effort there. The ability to flow from his inside spot and stop that one at the line of scrimmage. Nice linebacker play. Second and nine. They'll keep it on the ground. Four. And he's taken down, but able to get this up to the 20 yard line. That's good for a Cleveland first down, an 11 yard pickup. No doubt those are the types of carries they're looking for here, Charles. The lead in the fourth quarter. This is when coaches that have a reliable running game, they breathe a little easier on the sideline. Yeah, they love the idea that they can take the air out of the football at this point of the game. That means they're really counting on that offensive line, counting on the runners, taking care of the football. Because you're going to tell your quarterback, hey, no time to be a hero. We're not going to throw it here. Just eat up that clock. And if you have the ball, they can't score. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. Give him four on the carry, and it'll make this a third and about two. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead, positive gain. Just keep that clock ticking. Two yards still to go. Third down now. Flacco from the gun. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he is going to have a Browns first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. The passing game continues to be their friend, even with a stable lead here in the fourth, Charles. They're going back to that well. Yeah, with their overall philosophy, you know that they trust their quarterback. He's been able to throw it well. They continue to throw these safe passes. Who can blame them? On first down, it's four. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take, puts a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. Fights through and now a crease. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. 143 yards rushing for him now as he has been tremendous all day long. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So the Browns in possession of the football here as we get you reset. And no doubt what they're looking to do is just salt away the final couple of minutes and escape with a win. And he probably should have given that one off as he's going to get hit and taken down behind the line. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. I don't think there's any doubt that if it's me, I'd be really cautious about continuing to call this play because you got to know, defenders, if they get a free shot at the QB, they want to take it, and they want to take it big. And they got it there on the option play for a loss. On second down, it's Ford. Only a yard of the pickup there, and it'll bring up a third down. I like it. I like the call. Still an opportunity to run the football and chew up a little more time off the clock. Third down and 10. Passing play, Flacco. This short pass into the hands of Njoku. And this effort will not get it done. He stopped well short of the first down at the 29. Excellent job there defensively. Gave up the underneath to the tight end on third down. And they made sure that they did their job. Got him on the ground and prevented him picking up a first down. A 46-yard attempt. And the kick is good. So you wonder how this one might be remembered the next time these two teams meet. But until then, this game's over.
So Cleveland able to come away with the victory here. And you know, it wasn't a shutout. They did give up the points in the first quarter, but second, third, and fourth quarter, they held them scoreless. Brandon, if you throw a shutout for quarters two, three, and four, you're going to win a lot of games in this league. And this felt a lot like, almost like if you say baseball, and the pitcher goes through the lineup the first time, and the hitters get to see him, and then they come out after that, and the bats start blazing, right?